Hey guys, Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com. Welcome to the 23rd installment in the Untold Truth in Detailing series. So today I'm going to talk about a topic that I have heard about for years and years. I have experienced it myself and I've just been thinking about a phone call that I got a few days ago. Actually, it was it was last week and I was asked how to deal with a particular situation and I believe I helped the guy out, but it's been like just working in my mind and I wanted to I felt like it was such a huge topic that I had to shoot a video about it. So the big concern here is if a customer calls you to detail anything, car, boat, motorcycle, RV, doesn't matter, and you have a conversation over the phone and it seems to be going well and you think that you understand what the customer's expectations are, when you get there to do the job, that customer has to be there with you to walk around that auto, boat, RV, motorcycle to show you what it is their concerns are. Now he, he may or may not, he or she may or may not have uh, explained that on the phone as far as itemizing the concerns that they have. But I can tell you that it's a completely different situation if the customer is there with your initial consultation when you're walking around that the, the situation uh, where the customer can point out the things, the key things that, that matter most to them. Because like I said, you want to cater to the customer. I've said that thousands of times in every video I preach cater to the customer. And it's very difficult to cater to that customer with a telephone conversation. So my suggestion, and it may sound like a crazy one if you could go ahead and get the job done and you know get paid for it. My suggestion is do not take a job. Well, not, not necessarily don't take a job. Do not go, don't schedule and go do a job if the owner, the customer at hand, the one that matters is not going to be there to do that initial consultation with you and to do that final walk around when you're done. You don't want to rely on someone else to say, hey, this is okay, you can get paid. It's a huge problem. It's a, mainly a problem because it wastes a bunch of time. Because if you make a plan over the phone, you show up to do a job, maybe the, the customer's wife or if it's a woman, if their husband is there and they don't really truly understand what matters to the person who owns the vehicle and they just basically let you loose to do your job and you do what you feel is right based on the conversation that you've had with the customer and the budget that's set and you know what you've told the customer and all of that and then at the end of the job you get paid but the customer's not there to check it all out it's as important for you to do your own inspection as it is for you to allow the customer to do an inspection at the end. You want that to happen, especially so that if you missed anything, you can go back for them and handle it right then. You don't want to have to come back across town or you know come back wherever and spend the time that you could be doing something else, making more money on repairing a job that just wasn't right. And here's the thing. Keep in mind that just because if, if this, and this will happen, definitely happen to everybody. If you go about your business after a job is complete and that other person, not the owner, but the other person that's there or whatever pays you and then you're done and then the customer comes and they can walk around it themselves, they may have things that were covered up, that were out of sight, that were just something that's not as obvious 
to you because it's not yours. Maybe you don't care as much as about that particular thing. Maybe that's something that if you had that car, you wouldn't even bother with because it doesn't bother you. It's so important to have that initial consultation with the customer to get their expectations lined out and then they don't need to be there while you execute. You can handle the job and then it's also equally as important for you and the customer to do a walk around of whatever it is you detailed before you get paid and before you are done. Now, I don't necessarily have a problem. Well, it, it's, it's always an issue when the customer is not going to be there. And sometimes it's a matter of convenience to them and you want to provide that convenience. But at the same time, I don't really love like not getting paid right after my work is done. So the other option would be to basically, if they're not going to be there, then they don't pay you until they are there. But then you got to wait to get paid. So that's equally as a pain in the butt as not them not being there at all. And then you getting a call back saying, Hey, you missed this, this, and this, or, you know, maybe the person's completely disappointed. Who knows? You want to make that customer happy for sure, but you need to do your scheduling scheduling in a way that you're accommodating not only the customer, but yourself. So this is definitely a scheduling issue. So what I'm trying to get out, get at guys is if your customer cannot be there for the initial walk around consultation and cannot be there at the end when you're done to walk around with you to make sure nothing was missed and then get you paid, I would recommend scheduling at a time where this can happen. Both things. If it's going to be a multi-day job, which... <laughs> You guys probably know how I feel about that. You know, most most things can be done in a day. If not two days, no more than that. Doesn't make any sense. Um, but if if you can schedule it where the customer has a couple minutes, just take the the initial consultation is five minutes. It doesn't doesn't take long for the you or the customer. You just need to be accom accommodating to the customer to be able to get there and spend that time with them. It is so important to do that consultation face to face. It is more important than you probably realize to do that that consultation face to face initially, and then to also do another final consultation at the very end. So keep that in mind, guys, when you're doing your scheduling. You want the customer there at the beginning to tell you what their concerns are because that's important. You want to hear the customer say it. It's also equally as important for the customer to be there when you're done. Again, because things that matter to you may not matter to the customer and things that matter to the customer may not matter to you if it were yours. That's just how reality works, whether you're detail oriented or not. And the biggest problem could be that you just didn't see something. Maybe there was a panel that was locked somewhere that you couldn't have, you, you couldn't have access to because the customer wasn't there. And or maybe if you're on a boat, maybe a switch doesn't work. Maybe the battery's dead. Maybe you can't access everything. Maybe on a car, there's a spoiler in the back that needs to be raised up and you aren't familiar with that car and didn't know that, but the customer's gonna come back and check underneath that spoiler and make sure that that's dirty. My point is, it doesn't make you wrong if you miss something. Even the most thorough of, it, of us will miss something sometimes. It makes you wrong if you're not willing to go back and take care of the mistake that you made to please the customer. So this video is not about who's right and who's wrong. This video is about how important that initial consultation with the customer is, with the job at hand, to understand face to face with the customer their expectations of the work that you're going to do but beyond that it's equally as important for the customer to be there when you're done because done to you may not be done to them and vice versa so balancing all of that is very important and you can only do that 
face to face with the customer at the beginning and the end of a job. If you guys got any questions, 813-846-4406. So we roll, baby. Um, I'm always here to help if I can, you know, help you in your detailing endeavors. Check out detailjuice.com for my products. Check out Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation. It is a group on Facebook where we talk about me and my products and my processes and that kind of thing. So if you want to be a part of something bigger than detailing, uh, check out Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation on Facebook. And as usual, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you guys who take the time to listen to me babble. I hope I help you guys. Have a wonderful week.